So at this point, it's kind of a given that with every update we get from Modern Warfare, there's at least a handful of changes that aren't related to the community via patch notes. Don't ask me why, because it's just as perplexing to me, but in update 1.14 to kick off season two of Modern Warfare, it's no different. In fact, it actually takes that number of hidden changes that we've seen in the past with each update and ramps it up even more. Normally, we'd see probably about the average being right around 15 or so each update, but with this update, it's all the way up to 37, and that's assuming that I got all of them accounted for. So today, we're going to break down every secret change in what was a part of Season 2's kickoff and keep you in the loop for what you need to know. If I missed any, feel free to let me know, but as we go along, let me know your favorite changes here out of this list. I'm sure there's a bunch you could be happy with that I know that I personally am, but also, if you are new, do be sure to hit the subscribe button. We're close to 300,000 subscribers, and I'd love to keep as many of you guys in the loop as possible with Modern Warfare on a daily basis. But anyways, let's get into it. We'll probably breeze towards the latter changes since they're more technical ones, but let's begin. First things first, obviously the big elephant in the room, one that I had to mention here, but was not ever acknowledged, was that of the brand new main menu classified top. Now, by all indications, leaks, glitches in-game that place players into this, or something that showcases where I've even recently seen where it doesn't even showcase as classified, but explicitly says it, it looks to be the mode Warzone, which is the theoried as of right now because it's not officially confirmed, though again, it's the worst kept secret by DMCA takedowns and all these leaks, that this looks to be the battle royale for Modern Warfare. Again, added to the main menu, not ever acknowledged, but doesn't have any functional purpose just yet, so it's a change, but I don't want to stay on it too long. Next up, one thing that wasn't ever mentioned, but is there for players that either didn't complete their tiers up until a certain point with Season 1, or may have just gotten the game as of, say, yesterday, or while Season 2 launched. Season 1 now has weapon challenges, so the Ram 7 and the Holger 26 can both be acquired in-game organically, very similar to how the crossbow is available as of right now. For the Ram 7, all you have to do is get two headshots using assault rifles in 25 different matches, and the Holger 26, it's two long shots using LMGs in 25 different matches, if I'm not mistaken. Then we end up seeing that, again, another unannounced change is that the XP boost is a thing with the Battle Pass. You end up seeing this in the Battle Pass if you scroll over and see the instant unlocks, but it wasn't ever actually officially mentioned, and it's something that can really help you out in the long term for ranking up through Season 2. Then we end up seeing that Season 1's 10th emblem, the Completionist emblem for getting 100% of challenges done, that's actually been amended, and now it's animated for Season 2 and beyond, nullifying any worries that players had that if they completed it last season and it wasn't animated, that it was kind of a lackluster reward. It's now the same as Season 0, so that's in there as well. Switching gears slightly from an emblem to a calling card, there has now been one added in for the nuke that you can see on strain for you guys right now called the Mighty Mushroom. This is something that is rewarded to players who get a nuke, if I'm not mistaken, after the update. To my knowledge, I don't think that it's retroactive where you can end up getting it if you got one before the update, which is a bummer, but it was added in for those that can get the nuke. After that, the next thing we can talk about that was added was the commendations, which is basically just where you can see all your career medals. And there's a lot of things that are tracked, surprisingly. A lot of things that you probably don't want to see as well, such as maybe your maybe most embarrassing moments in game, maybe like the ragdoll medal where you get the most deaths. But there's a lot of cool stuff that's tracked that you maybe don't know is even tracking in the background. So it's a cool little thing just to kind of touch up and see how you play the game. But those were added in as a new feature that never was mentioned as well. Another feature that was added in that got slightly mentioned, but didn't in some aspect is that of the regiment clan tags. Now, this actually is something that you can end up changing to a yellow clan tag, which is, I think, the default. But the regiment clan tags, if you end up having a mouse and keyboard plugged into your console or you just do it on PC, you can end up actually doing it, the carrot icon and then a number one to nine in that clan tag. And you can change the color of your clan tag and also subsequently change the entire player name color as well that showcases to enemies. Now, this actually has a bit of a big problem with it because it messes with players aim assist. And that's something you may have felt for yourself as in the last couple of days. And you're not crazy. It's an actual in-game bug and also another reason as to why this is going to be changed. Additionally, with the regiment feature, we also now have a new in-game text option as well for a regiment or a clan chat filter. That's been added in, was never acknowledged. Let's talk about some camos though next up because there's a couple of things here that have been changed out. Firstly, camos no longer look 
as worn on weapons. It was something where some weapons definitely had less range of the opacity on the weapon canvas. That's actually now been buffed up where a lot of the camos now showcase fully, whereas some it seemed almost like a battle-worn type of deal where it was scratched off. That's been changed out. Additionally, camos now apply to different weapon parts that they may not have before. The biggest one that you may notice is that of stock scopes on snipers being a perfect example of this. The weapon camo and design now applies to the scope, whereas it did not beforehand. In terms of another thing that I personally noticed in game big time was that of the platinum camo buff, but only in the menus, which is kind of crazy to me because I think it looks really good now in menu, but in game it still looks a little lackluster. But as you'll see on screen right now, before and after picture, you can clearly tell that it's been shined up, it's been polished up a little bit, and it showcases a little bit more of a bit more vibrancy on that camo itself. So that's been changed out. Riot shields now have the ability to add multiple stickers to it. So that's something that in terms of camos, not necessarily, but in other customization, sure. The store layout was changed within Modern Warfare as well, actually entirely redesigned. So that's something you may have noticed as well. Previously, it was all horizontal options, but now it's horizontal and also going vertical, showcasing a little bit more of the weapon pack preview, but that's something that was changed out. We now have weekly challenges in game as well, which is something that if you're a grinder, if you like to get that extra XP, you like to get those extra rewards, this is a fantastic addition for you guys. Next, we saw a change to the blue dot reticle, one that a lot of players may not ever even know was changed because it is something that I haven't seen too many people with. My good friend Lazy, I think, is the only person I know to actually have this in game because it's such a tedious grind for just a blue dot reticle. But what you can see on screen was the old version of this by user Rainman292 over on Reddit. And now what you'll see is what it looks like as of today. It's an entirely different reticle with almost seemingly just zoomed out in the scope as well. So a bit of a change there. In terms of the battle pass, visually you can now see that denoted in the battle pass where an operator skin is, it showcased a little icon in that upper left where it's got kind of a star to denote that it is an operator mission, not just a complete unlock of the operator uniform. So a nice differentiation, but again, something you may not have noticed. One that I absolutely loved was the Origin 12 new icon bug that got fixed out. The monolithic suppressor was finally added and it was the last unlock for that. So it finally gets rid of that green dot for a new icon, though unfortunately there is now another new one in the calling card section that I think almost everyone has. So when one's fixed, naturally another one breaks. But the final thing in terms of the immediate visualizations that you can end up seeing is that in game, assists on vehicle takedowns now reward you scrap assist. That actually though rounds us into the second half here of this where we can talk about the more functional things in game and technical aspects aspects, not necessarily just visualizations that are showcased right there, maybe up in front. So next up, we can talk about the fact that on Kravnik farmland, not only do they change these second stories to a lot of buildings, but now just outside of C, that fence overlooking B, you can actually now mount on that, which is good and bad. I always questioned why you couldn't because it was the perfect height for mounting, but also it's such a head glitch that it's not one that you really want to be around or facing rather, but you can do that now. You can now disable crossplay for ground war. Gunfight no longer supports split screen functionality anymore, which is a little interesting to me. Didn't see that one coming, but as a change that was made, the subsonic barrel on the MP5 now accurately conceals death skulls, whereas it had a bug before that it did not do just that. The Solo Zero NVG scope was something that had a couple of changes here to this. Firstly, it reduced the zoom of the scope. Second, it placed it further away from the model's face, which obstructs a larger portion of the peripheries. It also changed the color to a darkish teal blue, making it harder to see whenever you're actually scoped in, and then also it no longer sees through smoke. Cold-Blooded now has its visibility in Thermal Reduced, so making it a little bit tougher to end up spotting an enemy with that. Thermal pings are now something that showcase whenever a recon drone spots you, whereas previously all you had was that notice in your HUD that says you were spotted, and now gives a little bit more to that that allows for a more immediate heads up that you were spotted by an enemy. Assist score was buffed, now bringing 25 up to 50, and then offering 25, 50, and 75 for other items that you may get assists on. The in-game timer now turns red in the 
the final 30 seconds in that countdown for whenever you're about to hit time limit. From what I've heard, dismemberment and gore effects are now in multiplayer. When spectating an enemy now in a no respawn objective mode like headquarters, spectating a teammate showcases their name in blue, but you can now also see, for example, when everyone's dead in headquarters, spectating an enemy will now have their name in red. And infected, there's two changes here at this one. Firstly, you apparently get a second field upgrade of a munitions box, which is pretty cool. And you also now have the ability as a survivor to survive a one hit of a throwing knife without dying as the last survivor. On PC, the bug of stun grenades seems to be fixed out where previously stuns lasted way longer than they did on console and severely limited the range of motion that players had. Slide to fire time seems to have been increased. And the final two things I want to mention come down to weapon inspect changes that I've personally noticed. Firstly, the weapon inspect animation buttons, I believe, are different here. Previously, you had to hit the right stick and then X or square, depending on the platform you're at. But now you just have to hit the right stick twice. So a little more streamlined, but it certainly has messed me up because I'm so muscle memory used to doing those button combinations that it caught me off guard when trying to take a screenshot. And then also weapon inspects when you want to preview something in the mission challenges has changed. You can no longer just simply press what was, I think, square or X on the selected mission to at any point see the weapon preview. You now have to not only use the right stick instead of the button, but you also now have to be over the individual item you want to see. So you can actually preview calling cards, emblems, and such at the different objectives in said mission. But if you want to see the weapon at the end, you have to go to the last objective to then preview it. And little extra, though I don't know this one confirmed off the top of my head, talking weapon inspects, I'm actually fairly certain some of the weapons have had animations removed. Yesterday, when I completed gold on the Joker, I went to take a screenshot of it and I couldn't get a weapon inspect. So pretty sure you could before, but as of right now, you cannot. But ultimately, that's 37 changes here that have been made, again, under the radar. Infinity Ward never mentioned these in the patch notes, never was conveyed anywhere else. But stuff that I want to share with you guys here. So let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. What do you guys think of these? Is there any change that you guys are really happy with out of this that you wish they would have conveyed? Is there anything that I missed here out of this, perhaps? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff we got you covered here on the channel so if any of that interests you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected with me outside of youtube but i can live on both those so if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question wherever it may be that link is down there in the description below that said thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace